Hey guys, welcome back. So I got my compost soil delivered for all of my grow bags today. But before I really start to move this, I need to move my compost area and do a few other things. So I don't know if I'm exactly going to get to this today or not. I don't know, either way, this week is going to be a week where I am going to be working really hard in the garden to get it completely ready for the growing season. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start though by getting the rest of this moved. I really wanted to get our entire compost area moved, even though I don't have another area set up that's on the agenda. This week is going to be a hard working week of moving a bunch of soil, but here we are. So it's actually been a few years since I've even got soil delivered. It was when we did the entire remodel of this space. I will say be picky on where you get it from. Not all places are the same. I really trust these people. I've used them all but one time in this garden space. And the one time I didn't use them, I had terrible quality compost. But getting soil dumped like that is one way you can really save money if you are trying to start a garden from scratch. I really feel like uh, this entire week's going to kick my butt because I have not been moving stuff around really in the last few years. So I'm definitely going to get a really good workout this week. So first things first, I'm just going to try to get all of this stuff moved and then I need to get this caging off. I need to get all the T-posts off and probably level out this area a bit. I don't know, we'll see what we're working with here, but I'm just gonna start by moving soil and then moving soil. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of moving soil this week. One thing I mentioned last week when it comes to this compost area is I hate that we don't have a front area, but it's also really hard to mix up. So I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do really with another compost area. I also need to move like this stack of wood and all of these little grow bags. I really just wanna put bigger grow bags all along this area here because it gets really, really good sun and it'll be good for tomatoes. I think I got enough of this moved now where I can go and tackle getting all the hog fencing off. I went and got this uh, from my husband's little toolbox. I don't know what they're called, but I do know that these cut the wire for the hog fencing. So I'm gonna try to get all the hog fencing off as much as I can. And then I'm gonna try to get the T-post out. I have obviously some soil left over in here and it's because um, some of this is really uneven since I've been digging at it for years now. Um, and I can just tell there's divots in the soil and I wanna level this out before I put any grow bags. I ended up bringing out some of the grow bags already to use to fill up a little bit because this area ended up being a lot more broken down than I thought, which is a really good thing. This was the only side that really wasn't broken down and I was adding stuff to that until like September or October. So that's the plan. You know, I've been working on this space pretty much for seven years and it wasn't until year five, I really felt like it was really turning into a garden garden. And even then, I mean, there's always something you want to change and tweak. I read something once where it says it takes like five years to establish a garden space. And that's one thing that really worries me for when I eventually move out of this property, because I know I've put in a lot of hard work <laughs> in this space, but hopefully I've done a lot of trial and error like this compost pile where whenever we do eventually move, I'll know what I like and what I don't like. Oh, okay, well the hog fencing actually might be a little bit easier than I thought. All right, let's see, let's see. I am still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do for a compost area. I have some time, so I bagged up some of the leaves I had over there. That way, come summertime, whenever I do like get a new compost system set up, I will have some browns ready to go. So this area here, this third one, was pretty much all of my garden from last year and then leaves. And as long as you have like green material, in um, brown material. So your green material will be anything fresh out of the garden. And then your brown material will be things like leaves, cardboard, stuff like that. 
Um, so I have all those leaves and bags that I'm gonna throw in my shed to save for whenever I figure that out. But if you have any um, compost systems that you like or have used, please let me know. I've just been really like indecisive on this whole thing because I don't really want to spend a lot of money. This obviously was super cheap. We just used stuff we had left over. But again, we didn't really like this system, even though we've had this system for, I think four or five years now. I also have to like move all of this. We have a bunch of wood because we cut down three trees. There used to be a tree right where uh, my phone is and that shaded out a good part of the backyard but it was completely dead and that's when we remodeled the whole garden space we had more space where we were able to do some things and we have a lot of wood still even years later because again we cut down three full trees of course my husband builds stuff well <laughs> so i have to like unpry a bunch of these metal pieces First panel is gone. The one thing I really hated is that dirt would get caught back here and then I could never mix that. Okay, not going to lie, I'm pretty wore out at this point. I got all of that taken out. And then I also cleared out this back area because we have additional soil that's been sitting back here. So now what my plan is, is I'm gonna try to get all of this completely leveled out. I think I'm gonna have to bring it all the way throughout here, which is completely fine. I just wanna make sure I get all of that soil level and then all of that will be cleared out. It's definitely more of a project than I was thinking it was going to be today. I'm probably not going to get to the other soil pile at all. You might be able to see where the soil was up to on the fence by all of the water line there. I really wanted to get it off of the fence and just all levels. I'm 100% positive that all of that looked way easier than it really was. I honestly probably moved just as much soil today as I got delivered. I honestly forgot that this back corner was all soil as well. I just thought it was all, um, leaves and grass that I was using for compost and it wasn't so I got all of it moved leveled I got it compacted I probably need to compact it a little bit more to be honest but I am so wiped right now I just I need to go eat something and get a shower um I'll see you guys in the morning all right guys <laughs> good morning I am definitely a bit sore not going to lie and it's later than I really wanted to be out here. It's already 10.30. I crashed last night at like 9.30 and I slept until eight. And it's just been a very slow morning. My biceps really hurt. I am tired, but I'm gonna try to get as much of this move today as possible. So I'm going to be filling a bunch of grow bags. I have some 50 gallon ones here and then 25 gallon ones. I started to fill a few of these 25 gallon ones yesterday along the side, but I got some new ones this year because my old ones just aren't cutting it. They're really thin and they end up ripping, but um, I got some really, really big ones from Bootstrap. I really like to have cloth planters. They're, uh, they're affordable compared to other planters. They last years and years and years, and you can typically find areas for them. Um, I'll link these ones down below for you guys. I also have a hundred gallon one from them that I have perennials in. I have Echinacea and Yarrow for the last few years, and I just really like how thick these ones are. They also have really sturdy handles. I ordered ones from Amazon my first two years of uh, gardening and they have just not stood the test of time but yeah that's the plan for today I'm going to be moving a bunch more soil I'm so sorry if this is just so boring but it is part of gardening and it's a part of gardening that is hard when you're setting up your garden it takes a lot of effort 
a lot of effort. <laughs> this is the 100 gallon grow bag. I have yarrow, echinacea, and also onion chives in here. I still need to get this cleaned out. I believe these ones are 10 or 15 gallons. These work really great for herbs and different kinds of flowers. They move really, really easily as well. Here are the 25 gallon ones I started yesterday. I'm gonna leave those four there. And then I'm going to be lining this area here with all those 50 gallons. And I'm also going to be putting some of those 50 gallon ones under the A-frame trellis uh, for sweet potatoes. That's gonna be the hardest part. And I don't know if I wanna start with that or end with that. I should probably start with that, but I'll probably end with it. So I know some of you guys know this, some of you guys may not know this, but I used to do competitive bikini bodybuilding. And then once I started getting into gardening was when I stopped going to the gym at all. Typically during winter, I feel the need to like do a little bit of something. I actually thought about getting a gym membership this winter, but did I? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> I really just didn't want to go. But when you're moving stuff and you're in the garden all the time, I really realized that it just it keeps me really fit and healthy. And I really love gardening for that reason, outside of just getting food and mental clarity and all of that. So this is not the most soil I've ever had delivered and moved. The most I've ever had delivered and moved, I think was six or seven cubic feet. This is only three. One thing with grow bags though, versus a garden bed, is they're a little bit harder to fill. So you're moving soil a lot more than if you were to just to dump it into a garden bed. current state of the pile, I took a little bit of a break. I had some lunch and got a good amount of water. And I was also trying to figure out exactly how I was going to get these grow bags filled here. So I created this little ramp. We're gonna see if this ramp will work. If not, it's going to be a lot harder to get those filled. And yeah, I did wait <laughs> until the end to kind of figure this out. So I'm gonna just fill my wheelbarrow up probably halfway and see how it goes. I can stand on this just fine so I think it will be okay but the wheelbarrow gets pretty heavy <laughs> it's about waist level if that gives you a little bit better of a perspective on what this is looking like the 50 gallon grow bags actually hold a good amount of soil I still have my last set of 25 gallon grow bags as well but I didn't I wanted to get all of my 50 grow bags done and figure out this in-ground space first so I don't just wait wait till the end because this is going to probably be way harder than just filling up those by the fence and each one of those 50 gallon grow bags i think it was taking close to like two and a half of these i think the hardest part of all of this is going to be maneuvering this area i need to move my leaves from yesterday moment of truth Whoop, whoop. I think that's gonna work. Might wanna put a few more bricks right there, but I think that's gonna work. Whoops. So yeah, if you guys were here last week, you will know this, but my plan for this is sweet potatoes. If sweet potatoes don't work, I'm gonna throw some winter squash over here. I could probably even do um, just some indeterminate tomatoes or melons. I do have places for my melons though, but having the grow bags like this will help 
just be able to have more grow right here. So I have this row and this row off to the sides. And then my plan was to put the grow bags here. Then that way I can line these with flowers or like for the time being like cabbage or lettuce. And then the grow bags will be able to grow up and whatever is a vining crop will just go up on the trellis. So I'm actually getting a little bit more out of this in-ground space than I was in previous years. And just like that, it is complete. Needless to say, I'm sure I look like a crazy person. I'm exhausted. I think between yesterday and today, I was out here probably about 10 hours moving soil in total. So I'm wiped. I'm gonna get uh, the chickens a treat, collect eggs, and then I'm gonna call it a day. I want some coffee. I'm gonna take an Epsom salt bath because we all know I am, I'm gonna be really sore tomorrow. I'm already pretty sore to be completely honest, but I'll take you guys along and show you all the grow bags once I collect eggs. Oh no, you guys need water. Let me get you water. All right, let's see how many eggs we got for the day. Oh goodness, did we get, did we really get, we got all six, awesome. We got six. <laughs> I still need to try to get, um, I still need to try to get all the chickens wings clipped for their fence. Um, they're starting to be a little bit more docile with me, especially because they're seeing me every day on like winter time. But anyway, let's see here. Here's the big ones. Honestly, this was not as big of a pain in the butt as I was thinking. That really worked. I had to reset it up after a little while because I topped these off a little bit more. I have all these little ones right here. And honestly, if you're ever getting grow bags, never get these, uh, never get this size. This size works for like dwarf varieties. And I have a bunch of dwarf st uh, straw flower I'm probably gonna use for it and lettuce. Both those things work really well. So I threw those there. I got some of my old bags topped and then this is new as well. I got four more of the 25 gallons over here. And then I got all five of those ones over here. And we got a few others over here. Oh wait, I added one over here. So there was five, I added six. And then we have all these over here. And honestly, the way that this whole area looks compared to how it looked just yesterday, it makes me so happy. It looks organized, it looks all together. I cannot wait to throw tomatoes over here. I think I'm gonna throw like a sunflower maybe in that one or something, but yeah, I got all of the grow bags topped and ready to go. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to finish cleaning up the yard a little bit and then I'm gonna go get myself a cup of coffee and an Epsom salt bath and probably a shower. I could probably use both to be honest. Well, I was going to plant my broccoli today, but I'm going to hold off at least for today I might plant it tomorrow. I'm really trying to gauge exactly what the forecast is going to do over the next few days. We have a low that they've been ranging between 27 and 32, and I've seen it all over the place. I've seen it multiple different temps today alone. So I am just going to hold off and wait, kind of see what they might say here in another day or two. Tomorrow also is supposed to be cloudy, and today is super sunny and warm. It's currently 74 today. We've had a very, very warm end of winter going into spring to be completely honest i typically don't even plant my broccoli or my lettuce until the week of like the 20th of march so i was kind of jumping the gun anyway but again we've been really warm so i'm going to kind of wait on this for now but one thing i am going to do is go ahead and mulch all of the grow pots uh the grow bags and the pots that i filled yesterday i want to make sure that i get um straw on those to make sure that they don't dry out if your soil dries out way too long and you don't get water then it can become hydrophobic which i do not want um i also am going to go ahead and water the whole garden because last week i told you guys how i was having um i was finding grubs 
throughout the soil, which I was actually shocked. I did not find any grubs through the compost area or anything over there. And that was the initial issue I had a few years ago. So um, from time to time, you'll see grubs in your soil. Grubs are not a good bug. Um, they are a pest and you don't want them in your soil. So one thing I personally like to do is spray something called a beneficial nematode, which is a beneficial insect. And they're a microscopic worm that actually penetrates into your bad things like your grubs um, and will kill them. So I got a variety. There's a few different ones you can get, but I got a variety pack and it'll kind of handle everything from grubs, fleas, ticks, you name it. Um, I've really, really liked spraying these in the past and it's been a minimum of like a year and a half since I've done it. And they say to do it in the spring or the fall and to do it a few different times because each thing can be in a different growth cycle as far as like your grub goes and whatnot. It's very scientific, but it is one of those beneficial insects that I really love. Um, I really started to incorporate all kinds of beneficial insects years ago. I'm still finding green lace wings all over. Those are really good for aphids. Um, and I have crazy um, ladybug populations that just keep coming back every year. Um, so it's really cool to have beneficial insects. They can be a little bit more expensive, but it is one of those things that they really do target your pests um without you having to do too much other than release them so i will be doing that and i'm also just going to do a few other things so with it being nice warm and sunny tomorrow is supposed to cool down a bit and be cloudy i'm going to just get a few of the other things moved that i wanted to get moved behind the shed now that i cleared all that out um and probably like trim up yarrow and stuff like that i'll just take you guys along for it these are what i really want to move they drive me nuts i think they just look messy <laughs> and i'm going to put them behind the shed typically i mean i use pretty much all of these once we get into growing season but i'm just i'm sick of not having access to the other side of the garlic and this was something i really wanted to get moved once i got that back area cleared okay i'm not gonna lie this makes me a little bit sad. I told you guys last week how my in-ground space has the little railing on it because of our bulldog. This is like one of the last things we haven't moved when it comes to our dog. And it will be two years this summer. It's definitely gotten better over the years, but I have a bad habit of setting something and forgetting it. Man, I cannot believe how warm it is today. I think I've moved every shovel and rake I currently have over the last few days too. I forgot how heavy these are too. This is a T-post, um, like hammer. And the place it goes is a very awkward spot. This thing has to weigh like 15 to 20 pounds. Oh my gosh. Okay, how do I get this? That's a great question. The answer is, I'm gonna set it over here. Actually, um, um, I don't know. How do I get this over there? Man, this is just awkward, especially with how sore I am today. Okay. Aha! Got it. So one reason why I really wanted to clear out the front of the shed is I have these two amazing pots. I got both of them for $20. These are like $100 piece pots and I wanted to mention this. So if you're like starting a garden or if you need things for your garden, always check your local auctions or estate auctions. You can find some killer deals, especially with garden tools, like your everyday garden tools, hand tools, things like that. For instance, the pots I have, I need to bring them back here. I wanted to put them on each side of the shed because they're really pretty and the front of the shed gets really good light, but that's how I got a bunch of my other pots in front of uh, my garden beds and things like that. You can just find some amazing deals at these auctions. So check your local auctions. So one of the things I'm doing is getting all of my bricks up. I have random stacks of bricks all over the garden because I use them to put down 
um, things like frost fabric. I used them yesterday to help with that ramp, which having random bricks definitely comes in handy. Oh gosh, okay. There is a lot of ants right there. So you guys get to see me move dirt, now you get to see me move bricks. I'm sure that's really exciting. I was passing by my elderberries and I keep forgetting, I wanna show you guys. So this is my one elderberry plant. This is called a black lace. We're starting to get all the new leaves on it. Then over in this corner here, then we have my other elderberry and this is called instant karma. It has this really pretty variegated leaf on it. And these ones will cross pollinate. So this should be the year I get elderberry bushes. Oh, I just found more bricks. So the problem with this over here is my big maple tree will start to shade everything out once it gets its leaves and then it's just too shady to really grow too much. I've tried to grow stuff over here for years. This was where I originally had my trellis tunnel for my loofahs. Needless to say, epic fail. The loofahs really need a lot of sun. Of course, none of these bricks are the same size because a bunch of them broke into pieces. So they're not like the easiest to stack right now. So I wasn't going to bore you with watering the entire garden and also mulching it. That took a while, but here are beneficial nematodes. I have the triple blend, so it will pretty much take care of a lot of different things. Let's see here. So to name a few, you're looking at queen ants, army worms, uh, bag bugs, different kinds of moss, um, pill bugs, which is uh, one of those I really need to get killed as well on top of grubs, cabbage moss or uh, maggots, let's see, corn borers, corn earworms, cucumber beetles, fleas, flies, fly larvae, fruit flies, fungus gnats, grubs, different kinds of boars and beetles, worms, like there's a whole list of all different things here. So you can see how this will really affect different things throughout the garden. These girls are going crazy. So all I'm going to do is I pre-moistened my entire backyard. I bought 5 million, which will do this whole surface area here. You can buy different amounts depending on what you need and you store them in the fridge until you need them, but they do say not to, um, Oh gosh, I need something to cut this. They do say not to keep them in the fridge longer than two weeks. So all I'm going to do is all the nematodes are in this little powdery form here. I'm going to dump them into this water and I'm going to mix them and dissolve them up <laughs> really well before I put them into my sprayer here. You can use a sprayer, a garden sprayer, a pump sprayer. Um, there's all different, a watering can. You can really apply these almost any way you want. Where did my little stick go? Oh, and then I'm just going, like I said, I'm just gonna mix them up really well so they're all well dissolved. And then I'm just going to go through and spray the garden. Like I said earlier, this is something you wanna do at dusk or dawn because you don't want to have the harsh UV and having the soil already moist will help those uh, beneficial nematodes go into the soil. This is probably going to be something I actually go ahead and spray a few times throughout the spring uh, because I had a really bad problem with cucumber beetles last year, squash bugs, vine borer, you name it. So I'm gonna try to make sure I don't really have a problem this summer. And then like I was saying earlier, you do them in waves. So you can spray them, I believe every two to three weeks or so. That way you're catching all the different larva phases that they can uh, be in depending on the pest. I also had a big issue with flies last year. So hopefully I'll see a decrease in flies this year. All right. And we're just gonna spray the entirety of the garden. I, this is a backpack sprayer, but I don't know where I put 
uh, the straps for it. I need to find those. And if I didn't mention this, it's safe for pets, humans, you name it, it's safe. I also wanted to wait till I got all that soil moved yesterday to do this because I don't know what might be lurking in the soil I bought. Better be safe than sorry. This is where I found majority of the grubs last week. Got five eggs today. It's the next day once again. So I am obviously in my seed room. I am going to get some seeds started today, but I'm not going to start all of them. So this morning I was going through all of my footage over the last three years, and I was just trying to gauge what I wanted to do with broccoli. So I'm gonna go ahead and get broccoli planted after I'm done doing the few seeds I'm gonna start today, but this all ties in, so hold up. So um, last year I did an April garden tour and I showed my seedlings before my last average frost date. Um, and typically I plant out my peppers, my tomatoes. I wait till that first week of March. And when I was going back through the footage from last year, last year was definitely by far my best tomato starts. I really held back on starting them. And this was the week I was going to start them because I started them this week last year. But I'm going to wait another week. Tomatoes grow so fast. And looking back at the footage from last year, I honestly like waiting a week really isn't going to make that big of a difference with tomatoes. If anything, it's going to make my life that much easier. So I'm going to wait on tomatoes. I'm currently sitting like four and a half, five weeks from my last average. But again, I don't plant out my peppers, tomatoes, any direct sowing like that until the first week of May. So with that being said, I don't have as much seeds starting today as I originally planned. I am gonna go ahead and start loofah today. I'm starting some basil today and some parsley today. I'll probably do a few waves of basil, but after I'm done with this, I am gonna go ahead and plant out the broccoli and my collards, my kale, all of that. So I've been just really watching the weather and then I actually went through, I was like trying to see exactly how our weather patterns played out for the last few years and you can always find your weather history. So I was going through trying to see exactly where our lows were sitting last year compared to this year and how they played out through April and May and I'm going to be just fine. So what was happening with our weather was at the beginning of the week, we are currently toward the end of the week now and we're sitting like a few days from that day that was supposed to get kind of cold. So and it's not even really going to get kind of cold. <laughs> so with Kansas, our weather just fluctuates so much and you really cannot gauge what is going to happen until a few days before a lot of the time. Um, so originally at the beginning of the week, they were saying that we were going to dip to about 27, 28. Broccoli is still fine at that temperature, especially if you cover it with frost fabric. I just really didn't want to like risk it if I didn't have to, but we're every single news site and everything now that we're closer toward the end of the week, like this is here in two days, is supposed to dip that low for a low. Um, they're not even saying we're going to get below 32 and regardless broccoli is completely fine my broccoli plants have been sitting outside for days now all day all night they will be just fine if i have to i have frost fabric but i'm really not too concerned about it to be completely honest i feel like over the years i've gotten just so much better when it comes to timing things out outside and then timing things out in here two i think it was two years ago at this point mid-march this entire uh, space was completely filled with seed starts. I started my tomatoes way too early. They were massive. Like there was two years where my tomato plants were just huge. And tomatoes, again, grow so fast. You just don't, do not start them too early. So if you can see, this is where my peppers are currently sitting. Now that they have gotten their true leaves, these are gonna really start to take off over the next few weeks. They do take a little bit to get going, but once peppers get going, they get going. I'm really not concerned. I actually pushed back my pepper 
planting date by a week this year just because I felt like they could. The less you have them inside and stressing out your seedlings to any degree, I always feel like is just that much better. So next week I'm starting tomatoes, which will probably be one of the latest I've ever started them, but I'm very confident in my decision with that. So with today, I'm starting Lufa, which is always a really exciting one. And then I'm gonna do my basil. And then I wanted to start parsley. Here's parsley, okay. Let's see, is there anything else outside? Oh, I'm gonna start some lemon basil as well. Okay. And then I also am gonna start, I think a few more hibiscus. I started these, what was it, last week with you guys. And then I think I'm gonna start a few more dahlias. I think I'm gonna have a little a few spots that I can stick these in and then when I was reading up closer with the hibiscus you can really plant these pretty close uh, 8 to 12 inches apart when a lot of things um, they really a lot of different things are like 18 to 24 so with these being an 8 to 12 I think I can actually get away with more than 8 especially because I am going to be putting all of my lavender in the front of my house and i think i'm gonna have extra room to where if i wanted to put more hibiscus up there i really could so i'd rather have more than not especially because we drink so much hibiscus tea but that's kind of that's kind of the gist for today let me backtrack for a second so i have not needed a lot of these lights anymore because i've gotten really good at holding off on starting certain things and then timing things out where now I'm going to have even more room in the seed starting room because all my broccoli, my lettuce, all of my cabbage, all of my cool weather crops are going to be planted out between this week and next week. And I really just don't need much of this anymore, um, which I think is really crazy because again, two years ago, I had chickens in the basement because I was waiting for their coop to be finished being built. And then I had so many seed starts that it was a crazy mess in here. So I'm going to be starting way more loofah today than I'm going to plant out. I only ever plant out two loofah plants. For me, I've always averaged about 25 to 30 loofah plants per plant. There is no way I need this many. I like to start at least four, four to six, and then I pick like the two strongest plants. And then at that point, I will gift out away uh, I'll hand out different loofah plants to friends um, I actually uh, gifted seeds out this year for loofahs so we'll see but if anyone wants a loofah plant when it comes to that time of year I'll probably be gifting some away if not I have a million and one loofah seeds I'm really not concerned about it <laughs> I always like to plant out extras of everything at least a few extras of everything and that way i can pick the strongest starts if a start doesn't look as good i will not plant it so this is what we started last week this is the dahlias i only had one not germinate all of my oregano germinated and then here is my hibiscus the one thing i find really interesting about the hibiscus is it's just now starting to turn a little bit more green. It came up and it popped up and it was kind of yellow. And I was like, what is going on? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a row of soil blocks and soil blocks. And I'm gonna plant out four more dahlias and four more hibiscus. Another tip when it comes to seed starting, I've had a lot of questions when it comes to mold and just keeping your seed starts healthy you guys you got to have fans on even though i'm recording right now and i don't have fans on i have two fans going majority of the time down here you really got to have good airflow when it comes to your seedlings you want your soil to dry out especially on the top if it doesn't dry out on the top like you don't want it to dry out too much but you do want it to dry out a little bit where you're not going to have all that mold or anything grow on top that also helps um keep fungus gnats and stuff like that at bay Ooh, you know what would be fun let me so i have my loofah seeds here but let me get like an actual loofah so i have a few loofahs here that are still dry and they still have their seeds in them so let's plant a few from my garden last year and let's plant some of the seed packets so i'm going to do three from mine and I'm gonna mark them with an X for mine. And then we'll do three from the seed packet. 
All right, one inch in depth. I really love loofahs um, for the fact you can harvest them and they last in your basement. I love gifting them. So this will be a fun little experiment. I'm really curious to see which starts will look better. So here's my flat of broccoli and lettuce. It looks so good. I'm really proud of what all of this looks like. But what I'm gonna do is plant the broccoli and not the lettuce today, just as precaution, because it is Kansas and you never know. These girls are going crazy because I'm never really sitting this close to them outside the fence. But anyway, so broccoli is a lot more frost tolerant. It can handle some harder freezes. Lettuce can handle light freezes, um, but it's a lot more tender than your broccoli leaves are. So as precaution, I'm probably going to wait on the lettuce today um, and just plant out the broccoli. And then I wanted to show you guys this. So I mentioned earlier in the week how I had hog fencing for the um, compost area. I also um, have them for these like little hoops. So when we did the in-ground space, we had all of these hoops just cut and ready to go. And I have a bunch of them. Um, so if I need to, if it ends up dropping for any reason below 32, um, I have these and I will layer on frost fabric, um, which frost fabric can um, up the degrees about six to eight degrees, I believe. So if we were to get to 30, inside will be 38. And there's some other things I can do as well, but I'm just going to plant anything that's more hardy um, in these three rows here. Overall though, this is probably like some of my best looking broccoli and lettuce starts. And one thing I've been doing differently this year is using that kelp and seaweed fertilizer. I have been loving it. It's the first year I've ever used it and all of my starts have looked so good. So I'm gonna go on the side of 18 inches apart. So all of my cool weather crops have looked so good, minus my cabbage. Even then, this is like not good cabbage compared to previous years, but this is just a good example of how terrible some of these look compared to some of the ones that actually did decent. So this is what I mean when I say, I just wouldn't plant this. I'm not going to plant any of these. I am going to plant these three though. And then I still have two broccoli left, um, a, collard oh gosh and then also two kale here and even then look at the difference between those kales that one kale is like the only one that didn't do too well either way i'm going to put these inside just in case for some reason like a pill bug were to eat at these or something were to happen but i got all of the broccoli planted i got 14 broccoli planted between these two rows here and then i went collards kale collards kale collards and i went ahead and just put the hoops over everything just in case that way I can just run out and throw some frost fabric on that but I'm gonna get this stuff watered in and then plant my few cabbages put one right there I'll put one right here We'll do one right here. We'll do like one big triangle. And there's the cabbage. I almost forgot I wanted to get some spinach planted today. So spinach is really quick. It's also really frost tolerant. For me, it doesn't do too well in the heat unless I put it in a shady area. This is a pretty full sun area, but I can always sow more later. My plan is to plant this out with spinach and then turn around and probably plant it out with flowers or something. So I'm just gonna put a few seeds every six inches. Spinach is one of those things that you can direct seed in the ground four to six weeks before your last average. 
I can also do some beets right now, but I don't know really where I want to put them. And I'm not the biggest fan of beets. I thought about freeze drying a bunch of beets for like a beet powder, but I'm not like dead set on getting beets in the ground. Well guys, I think that's going to be it for this week. I have some other boring tasks I'm not going to take you long for. I'm sure I've already bored you enough this week. I need to clean the chicken coop and weed a few things. But other than that, I think that's going to pretty much sum up everything I need to get done in here for the week. But I hope I didn't bore you too much. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me this week. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.